Pop in those headphones and let's get into the raw and real side of entrepreneurship, health, and what it takes to achieve success in pursuit of becoming your highest self. You are officially on the path to becoming resilient in every area of your life. Welcome to Resilience Unplugged. Happy freaking Valentine's Day, my relationship people, my single people. I hope you are having an amazing day so far, and I hope that you are giving yourself the love that you want to receive. In honor of Valentine's Day, I wanted to really touch on why I believe that being single on Valentine's Day is not sad. It's actually a good thing. And I say this because I have had instances where Valentine's Day, when I was with somebody, was not good. It was actually one of the loneliest days of my life. And it just goes to show that you don't need to be with somebody to be loved, to feel loved. And you can actually have quite the opposite when you are in the wrong relationship. I vividly remember my last Valentine's Day, whenever I was in a relationship, I had ordered chocolate covered strawberries and ice cream. I got delivered, had a sweet little note with it. I was honestly super excited because I knew the person I was with wasn't going to want to go out and do anything, but I did want to still make them feel special. So Made a little note, had some strawberries dipped in chocolates. It was just a nice, cute little, I, I thought, cute little delivery um, or, or cute little surprise. All that I wanted for Valentine's Day was just quality time with, with him. Um, and that is not what happened. Long story short, I ended up spending that Valentine's Day on our bathroom floor crying because I was just so upset, so sad. I felt so unloved. And it was just not the greatest feeling. And again, that was when I was, I was with somebody at that point. And I think that so many times we get so caught up in Valentine's Day and it almost exacerbates these feelings that are negative around being single. All this to say, I know a lot of women feel down when they are single on Valentine's Day. And I would love to totally flip this on its head and flip the narrative because I think it's one of the best things to do is to be single on Valentine's Day when you haven't found your person yet, when you are not compromising your standards, when you are not choosing to fulfill that time and that day with temporary people who are not going to be with you for forever. We make it so complicated in our heads and it's really not complicated at all. You either are with somebody you're going to spend the rest of your life with or you're with somebody you're going to learn a lesson from. I made a post about this on Instagram today, actually. It's just so common that I found for people to place the blame outside of themselves. If you are constantly finding toxic relationships, people who are ghosting you, people who don't want to commit to you, people who treat you like crap, if you are constantly having a bad string of luck in your past when it comes to relationships, there is one common denominator, and that is you. I don't think that being single on Valentine's Day is something to be sad about. I think it's literally, there's so much more in this world going on than you being single. And there's so much more good you can do being single than you can do pouting because you're single. You can utilize singleness as your superpower, or you can choose to have it be your crutch. I am not going to look at singleness as a sad thing because I know that my future husband when I'm ready, it's going to be there. I know that I will not be single for forever. I know that God has the most amazing man picked out for me. And we are, we are getting shaped and pruned into the person we need to become before we can meet each other or be that person for each other. A, a cool way to look at this is you're never going to get these years back. I will never be able to do things on my own terms when I'm married. I will never be able to come home to just my dog and have no one else to answer to, have no one else waiting at home for me. I will never be able to have a quick little grocery run because I want to get my food. I have to think about somebody else at that point. There is just so many things you get to do whenever you're single that I don't think we capitalize on because we spend our single years wishing we weren't single. And then we get in this relationship and there can be sometimes this resentment because you didn't fully live your life when you were single. So what if instead of being so sad about being single, we totally lived these years up, said yes to being with your friends more, said yes to spending more alone time, 
really focused on being in solitude and being okay with it. Like literally loving it, loving spending time with yourself, hang out with yourself. You should love your own company. I think if you don't enjoy your own company, you kind of got a problem. And there are so many great things that can come from being single. Also, if you as a business owner, when you are single and a business owner, you can put so much more effort into your business because you literally, again, have no one else to think about. Or in your career, if you are a very career-driven woman, you can put so much more effort into your career because you have nothing else that needs your energy except for yourself and if you have a dog, okay? Literally capitalize on this. Allow singleness to be your superpower. Please, 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 I'm begging you, totally rewrite the narrative of how you think about being single because it is not a bad, it's not something to be sad about. It's not something that you are missing something. You are not broken. You are not missing anything. Someone will come and ask your life eventually, but as of now, you have not found that person and that's okay. I think another important thing to talk about is there's literally nothing more lonely than being with the wrong person. You want to feel lonely? Go hop in a relationship with somebody who does not make you feel seen, who does not make you feel heard, who does not properly love you, who could care less about how you feel when you're with them. Somebody who thinks about themselves. I've been in a relationship like that where it looked so great on the outside and it was literally on paper, it was perfect. But I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel heard. I didn't feel cared for. We were very different people and wanted very different things. And I was asking the wrong person to do the right things. And that's one of the loneliest feelings is going to bed with somebody and feeling more alone than when you're actually in a bed by yourself. When you're eating dinner and it's just surface level conversations. When you talk and there is just, it's talking to a brick wall. When y'all are shifts passing in the night. It's so lonely to be with the wrong person. And so I want you to be thankful that you have yourself right now, that you don't have to feel lonely because you can give yourself everything you need. And just know that no matter how lonely you may feel right now, there is nothing more lonely than being with the person you are not supposed to be with. I think another great part about Valentine's Day is it maybe makes you realize that you are not giving yourself the love that you want to receive. I'm a very big believer that you have to give yourself the love you want to receive. Say one of your love languages is words of affirmation, yet you literally talk awfully to yourself. You think awfully about yourself. You have to be able to give yourself the love you want to receive. Or if that person starts doing that for you, they come into your life and they can give that to you. That is your source of happiness. That's your source of love. We can't, we can't have that. Or if you enjoy quality time, but you never spend quality time with yourself, these are all issues. These are all problems. So focus on what are my love languages? How do I receive love? What do I want someone to do? If you want a man who every Friday brings home flowers, do that for yourself first. If you want a man who writes you cards on your birthday because you love words of affirmation, do that for yourself first. Whenever we do these things for ourselves, this person that's going to come into your life will no longer be the source of that love, the source of that happiness, because you can give it to yourself. You have to give yourself the love you want to receive first and foremost before anyone else gives it to you. If not, it's a dangerous slope. I talk to a lot of women about relationships and it makes me very sad because a lot of women will lower their standards, ignore red flags and put up with things that they don't want to put up with. And here's the thing. You have no problem complaining about it. You can complain about it day and night. However, the problem comes when you have to take it into your own hands and make the change. So my question to you is, why are you putting up with less than you deserve? Why are you accepting less than you deserve? Do you even know what you deserve? A lot of women claim I'm worth this. I know my worth. I know what I deserve. Do you actually? Because whenever you're in a relationship, that doesn't match up. It's very different. What you say you're worth, what you say you deserve, the person you say you are, the person you say you want to be with, is not who you end up being with. I would ask yourself why. Most times what I see 
is it's a lack of self-respect. It's, it's a matter of, oh, but it's not that bad. It's okay. Like I, I, I can compromise in this area. Oh, I want a leader, but he never plans dates for us. I want a man of God, but this guy doesn't go to church. He thinks church isn't needed. And I kind of agree with that. I want somebody who my friends are going to love and they're going to mesh so well together. But this man has never tried to make a friendship with your friends or be around your friends. You see, these are all things that happen that we allow to happen. And it's because we're lacking self-respect. If you, okay, there's two points I want to make here. One is the lack of self-respect. Why do you think it's okay to not respect yourself enough to walk away? Why do you think it's okay to not respect yourself enough to communicate you want changes to happen and be okay with the outcome being that this man can't provide that for you? Why are you okay with a man who isn't exactly what you want, but you think you can't do any better? Those are hard pills to swallow. I would dig deep into why you're not respecting yourself. Why are you dis? Why are you okay disrespecting yourself in these scenarios in these, in these situations? Ask yourself that question. And then the second point I want to get to is one thing I, I, I like to think about quite frequently is imagine you knew that in six months your husband was going to find you. How much differently would you live your life at that point? probably very different. If you operate off that mentality, you would enjoy being single so much more. So I want to leave you with that. I want to leave you with envisioning that your future husband is going to come find you in six months. How much differently would you treat this last Valentine's Day? How differently would you treat coming home from work? How would you act differently around your friends? Would you say yes to more things? Would you enjoy more nights in on Friday night and not go out to the clubs. Just think about what you would do differently to know you are never going to be single again and you only have these six months to be single. I hope this was a helpful episode in any way. This was a little quick one. I love relationship stuff. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I can talk more about this. I I usually will give clients a lot of advice on this. I didn't want to go too too in depth on this topic, honestly, because it's not like my realm of expertise. But if people love this, cool, I'll definitely do more of this. I think I I, I operate best on like having questions. I just kind of came up with this topic randomly because it's Valentine's Day. And I was like, you know, let's talk about self-respect, self-love, and how we can make this a better Valentine's Day while we are single and not have it be this like looming, daunting thing that we are dreading ultimately. So go do something nice for yourself this Valentine's Day. Have the highest level of self-respect. If those men come, ignore them. If a man ghosted you and he comes back from the dead, goodbye. Keep him dead. If a man tries to reach out to you randomly, no thank you. Look at it as disrespectful. Okay, here's another thing I want to talk about really, really quick. View these things as a turnoff and as disrespect. A man can't communicate, turn off. Disrespectful. Eh, don't want it. A man cannot properly plan a date. Who would want that in the first place? No. Look at it as a turn off. Okay. These things are unattractive. We are no longer going to beg for a man, beg for attention. We don't, we don't want the energy. We don't, that's not, that is not a high level woman. A high level woman is not begging for a man's attention. She is not begging for a man to stay. She is not begging to be treated the way she wants to be treated. She is being super clear about her boundaries and communicating effectively on what she needs from a man. And if that man cannot do that, she is gone. And there's no coming back. There's no, oh, you, you want to change? Okay, I'll give you another chance. No, it is. This is what it is. You can't do that. There's no hard feelings on my end. No hard feelings on your end, hopefully. We are just, it's not going to work out. And that's okay. Be adults about it. But in 2024 and on, as a high-level woman, you are not going to allow a man to make you feel less than, make you feel unloved, make you feel unseen, make you feel unwanted. No. High-level women know their worth because they put their self-respect over all else. I'm going to go off this tangent now because I, I can go on and on and on. But have an amazing Valentine's Day, whether you're with somebody or you are single. Do something for yourself. Okay, be the love you want to receive. Give that to yourself first. If you are wanting the literal blueprint on how to 
practice self-respect in every part of your life and start romanticizing that. Start really loving yourself so much that you respect yourself to the highest regard that you will always have your best interest. You will always show up for your future self. And you want to know the habits that's going to help you become the fittest and wealthiest version of yourself. Romanticizing self-respect, the five-day mini challenge I'm hosting starts on February 18th. If you want in, message me over on Instagram or fill out the form below. I will link this in the description and I will get you all set up. I cannot wait to start. I will see y'all next week and go be resilient.